we have a cooler film production car than you have. And in this episode, we want to show you how we made it. And we want to take it for a spin, making a short film in some ice cold environments in the mountains. Twenty twenty one was a year of big growth for views, and we had more projects than we ever had before. And especially last summer, we were running from project to project and renting cars several times a week. So I felt kind of limited that we couldn't go where we wanted to, whenever we wanted to, because we had to rent the car. And I felt like we were throwing money out the window every time we were renting a car. So I thought to myself, wouldn't it be more economical? if we can get our own views car. This started a string of thoughts that would lead to many, many long weekends of works in the months to come. Picking the right car is not an easy task, especially when you know nothing about cars. But after looking at a bunch of different models, I came to the conclusion that a Volkswagen Transporter would be uh, the perfect fit for us. The long version of the Transporter is pretty big inside, but still small enough that uh, it could fit in a garage here in the center of Oslo. It also comes in a four-wheel drive version, which is perfect uh, and a requirement for me when I'm going time lapsing in the mountains. In addition, Volkswagen has a decent reputation when it comes to quality and it will be really important for us uh, to not have the car break down on the way to a film set. So I found this perfect car, a 2017 model uh, transporter. When I saw the car he actually wanted to buy, I was kind of, that's very expensive, do you have that money? <laughs> um, but I understood that if we're going to buy a car and use it for productions, it's very important that it actually works. If it just breaks down during a shoot or a big production, that might cost even more than what the car costs itself. So, okay, let's go. Let's buy this car. It's, it's expensive, but it will work. That's the most important. It's an amazing feeling in our own used car. And I went to pick it up, driving it back to Oslo. And I was driving past the Royal Palace. And then the car broke down. The, I had no power uh, and the motor just turned off. And there I was standing in a mysterious gray van in front of the Royal Palace. The police came up to me in a matter of a second, of course, and there the virginity trip of our transporter ended on the back of a towing truck. It turned out to be a broken diesel pump. Okay, the car is repaired. I haven't seen the car yet. Oi, oi, oi. Check out of them. No film car. After the van had spent some time in the repair shop, I was ready to turn this thing into a film production car. <laughs> we asked Martin, uh, how do you want the car to look like um, in the in the back? And he's like, I made a 3D render of that, of course. <laughs> and I made a 3D model uh, with all the different solutions, spent some time in finding um, something that would fit both as a film production car on set, but also as a home where I could live when I'm out on long uh, time-lapse trips in remote locations. Are you going to do this yourself? Uh, I think so. Huh? You're going to be gone for a month. Wow. Hvor vanskelig kan det være, liksom? Okay, so Morten is now going to leave uh, this place to build a car. Good luck! 
and then the building could start and I started by stripping the whole back of the car down to the metal. Then I put insulation on the walls, ceiling and floors. And then I made a big hole in the roof, which was kind of scary. But this was to fit the electric vent. I cut out the plywood to fit on the walls and I reused the wood from the floor and the ceiling. I wired up lights to have in the ceiling. And then I could make the frame. Again, I cut out plywood to use as the front. Fortunately, I got some help from my dad for the finishing touches and that made it look a lot better. We cut out the cabinet doors and put on hinges. Since the car was going to be used mostly in nature, I went with a color palette that would fit that in shades of green and brown. Then came what I think is the most interesting part of this car, which is how we're powering it. Initially, I thought about doing standard 12 volt car batteries, uh, but that involved a lot of cabling. We would need uh, an inverter, we need uh, external uh, solar power controller, all that kind of stuff. Then I saw that EcoFlow was releasing their brand new Delta Pro power station. And I thought, this is the perfect fit for our car. So I actually sent them an email asking them if they want to collaborate. We're building this really cool uh, van. And they said yes. And uh, they sent over the Delta Pro with a Delta Smart extra battery uh, and some solar panels. What makes me so excited about this battery solution is the capacity it has and also the output it can do. So the Delta Pro alone can do 3600 uh, watt hours of capacity. And it also does 3600 watts of output with a 7200 surge, so that's a lot. It can also charge uh, the whole Delta Pro in less than two hours. You can even charge at EV station, which here in Norway is super common. So you can just plug that in and you can charge on the road. And also we have two 400 watt solar panels, which is really awesome, especially in the summer, we can charge up that way. And then when we add the Smart Extra battery, we are doubling the capacity up to 7,200 watt hour. And that's pretty insane. Uh, well, to put it into perspective, we could power 10 Aperture 300Ds uh, at full blast for two hours. So there will be no more noisy, toxic fuel generators on our film sets anymore. Okay. Wow, cute. <laughs> so yeah, this is the back. And we can take down this. And we have access to the fridge. Here we have currently some bananas and coke, uh, which is all you need. And in here is the real uh, magic. We have uh, the battery. So here we can run power out to the set. And that would be really exciting to try it out for the first time. So here we can use this table for rigging. Uh, I'm gonna change this with some nicer ropes. That's kind of the last thing um, I'm gonna do on the van. And here is also nice for rigging cameras, um, cooking. So here's where you um, come in. It's like a sofa group uh, where you can sit and relax. And one of my favorite things about the van is actually this right here, which is our heating system that we just got installed. Here we can uh, put whatever temperature we want. I think it uses like two deciliter of uh, diesel per hour. 
and uh, it's a two kilowatt heater which is plenty for space like this so this right here you can actually turn into a bed a thing like this and you have a nice comfortable bed for one person or two two people that like each other and <laughs> but isn't it very hard hmm? you should have a mattress right yeah yeah the car turned out great it was like it had everything we needed i was a bit anxious about not having enough space for our uh, gear but he had some good ideas in here we have uh, storage in all these so i made sure that we could fit c stands in here because uh, I didn't want the sea stand to be laying like on top of uh, the wood here. So here I'm thinking to have the charging section. Uh, right now I have my drone here and actually the laptop. So in order to activate the editing station we lift up this to make it into a chair. So I have this thing back here that I can put in and we have three different modes. We have the laid back mode and we have the uh, I would say office mode uh, close to a deadline mode <laughs> and then we have like in between which is my favorite <laughs> yeah so this is um, the setup I think we're gonna go for uh, we have the MSI laptop set 16 creator MSI is actually sponsoring one of our uh, next videos you will see more of this laptop uh, in that so it's actually a pretty amazing laptop so we have it hooked up here to an external uh, display and here we have all sort of SD card readers we have a display port out uh, everything you would need I'll connect hard drives here and one of the things that's nice about this setup is that it doesn't only have to be for editing because you can actually switch turn this screen around and you can have a director's monitor uh, from the outside and maybe we can have a wireless transmitter on top of the car and going down into the TV. And that way we can use it on set as well. Yeah, I've been working so hard on this van and it was time to see if I had done a good job. So uh, why not push it to its limit and uh, go somewhere really cold. So I suggested that we should go to the mountains with the van and shoot something interesting and use the car and the van as a production van and see what it's capable of somewhere without electricity, so we would have to use the Ecoflow battery to power all the lamps. Originally, we wanted to make these scenes to just test out some new equipment and maybe have some shots for our showreel, but let's not just do some test shots. I had always dreamt of making a professional film uh, at the mountains near my cabin in Valdres in Norway. Of course, Anders always want to make things bigger. Hi! My name is Jonathan Tuvisen. I'm 33 years old, I'm from Sweden, I'm an actor, I've worked in the business for 20 years now. So when he called me and said, I have three locations, it's up in the mountains, it's gonna be freezing, are you up for it? I just said, yeah. I didn't even think about it, I said yes, I, I, I'm, I, I'm in, let's, let's find a costume. And uh, we had an hour, so we had a lot of pressure on us to find a costume. Yeah. Like, these things usually take months, but you know, when, when you have so much um, commitment and so much energy <laughs> uh, just bubbling away, you, you just want to, you just go for it. Du savnar lite över bara, lite mer fur kanske? Ja, yeah, exakt. Till den här delen. Ja. Yeah. After the positive response from Jonathan, and after testing out some costumes at the costume rental place, we were so eager to create something. It was like, wow, this is going to be so awesome. Okay, so for the story of the film, I was using a machine gun, maybe for some scenes, because I have some props in my barn. They were meant for the camera movie, if you remember that film. Oh, here we actually have an old steady cam I made. This, you can see it's plastic. I'm gonna try to make it look like it's, it's metal, actually. I don't know why, sometimes you get pictures in your head. I want to include a, like a machine gun to this character, and this character had this really old, almost a Viking type of costumes. <laughs> or is it overkill? Do a close up of Matthias. It's like, what the fuck? What are we shooting? I spent the whole night writing a script, 
And then we of course planned the story and the script just days before. And we also had to find the costumes and improvise. But it's fun. It's like, it's easier to play them and, and not overthink and use your intuition. I, I said it so many times on this channel that using your intuition and just go for it. I think that's a good way to work. And uh, that's what we did here. Okay, and we are ready to travel to the cabin. We have two cars packed with the equipment. So it's gonna be interesting. Let's go. <laughs> Vegetarian. <laughs> So we're going to my family's cabin in the mountains and I'm so excited because that's actually the place I made I think the most films with my family and had so much joy and I had actually always had a little dream of bringing a crew to the cabin and create something cool in this area. So this is a little bit, a uh, small little dream come true actually, this shoot. Yay! But now we're here, let's warm up the cabin. It's actually warmer outside. <laughs> <laughs> this is like beer grills. Can you see that? We're in a cold cabin in northern Norway. Water is here, just pump. Anders seemed quite proud showing his old primitive uh, cabin. <laughs> this is from the ground. You can't get any pressure water on this. Let's find the toilet. Here's the toilet. And just use some of this when you're done. Over the... I think I'm going to the car. It's much warmer there. So Anders had this idea of lighting a forest <laughs> and I was a bit skeptical of it, I have to admit, but uh, it actually turned out pretty good. Okay, so I have an idea for the night scene in the forest actually, because of the echo flow we can now actually light up the whole forest. Uh, instead of just having like one lamp hitting the character, we will look in the background and it looks fake because the background should also light up. So, I have an idea. So the idea here was to use actually more lamps, maybe like four 300Ds, aperture 300D, hang them up in the trees in the background with a lantern softbox to kind of make a soft ambient light in the background combined with the new Aperture 600X as the, the key light hitting the, like the, the main area around the, the actor. We just stretch a bed sheet between two of the trees. We make it really big, make it really soft because the moonlight is soft. So this right here, my friends, some world-class gaffing. If you hide the lamps in, in the trees, we could also shoot very flexible. We could then do a wide angle, we could also do close-ups and move the camera 180 degrees around and get the light in the background and get a nice key light from, from the 600X. So now we have put up all the lights, we have one 600X, we have some 300Ds in the trees, uh, three of them. Uh, they're not running at the full power, but it's enough to light the scene. Uh, we now have 97% left on the battery and it actually says we can run this for 18 hours, which is insane. Almost not making any sound compared to a generator and we can go for as long as we want. It's brilliant. You want the coke? Oh yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so this is before and this is after. Voila! That's good, right? Let's shoot. Så ikke, ikke tappe deg helt heller nå. Ja. Skal jeg gjøre noe til? Lyd. Kamera. Og vær så god.
So we're gonna do some shooting with uh, the rifle, the machine gun, and the best is to do as much as you can on set when it comes to lighting and effects. So we have this small uh, aperture lamp, which is really powerful, but it's small. We're gonna try to make him hold the lamp and do an effect, because it has a lot of effects. Then we're gonna use the uh, lighting effect. So it lights up and then it flashes. So then we can get the realistic uh, light on his face. And for the close-ups where he was shooting, we would actually see the aperture lamp that he was holding it, so we had to do something else. What I did then was to use a Godox lamp, like a light tube we had. Ah! And I was like just wiggling it down, up and down, like really fast while he was shooting to try to imitate the, the flashing um, uh, rifle flare. Come on! Okay, let's close the day. Yes, that's a wrap. Wow, really nice job. Magical work, yeah. people. We were super happy with the first scene and it was so nice to see uh, the van, the battery, everything come together and creating something so unique. But we had to get home, get some sleep because tomorrow morning we were gonna go up and film in the mountains. Oh, wow. Oh my God. <laughs>